students in this video we will learn about the muscular system and the digestive system in human beings now first let us start with the muscular system so whenever you close your fist tightly and bend your arm at your elbow you can feel the upper part of your arm with your fingers and you will feel that they have become harder so this hardness is because the fleshy part is there in our upper arms which consists of muscles the muscles contract and relax as different parts of our body move and these muscles give our body a proper shape and posture if we talk about our muscles so the muscles are firmly attached to the bones and they are attached to the bones by means of tendons so the tendons attach the muscles to our bones when muscles contract there is movement at the joint and the bones move near and away from each other so the action of muscles in this movement leads to the contraction and relaxation of the muscles so there are always some of the other movement which is happening in our body like for example our eyelids are closing and opening that is also the movement of muscle which is happening uh, when you are talking laughing walking jumping throwing something when you are doing some work we use our muscle for all the kinds of movement now there are two different types of muscles in our body voluntary muscle and involuntary muscle if we talk about voluntary muscle so the working of your hand or your legs or your when you are eating so these all movements depends on your will your hand is going to move when you want it to move your leg is going to move when you want it to move so the movement which happens on our will that is called as the voluntary muscles next we have the involuntary muscle the muscles which are not in our control the movement is not in our control for example breathing blood circulation digestion of the food all the functioning of our vital organs the internal organs they are not in our function our hand you cannot tell your heart to stop for 5 minutes or you cannot tell your heart to start beating for 5 or 10 minutes it happens automatically and all this movement happens because of the involuntary muscles so these are the two types of muscles voluntary and involuntary muscles let us now talk about the different types of muscle there are three main types of muscles in our body one is called as the cardiac muscle the skeletal muscle and the smooth muscle the cardiac muscles are the muscles of your heart it is related to the contraction and relaxation of your heart uh if we talk about the movement of the heart so it is involuntary movement uh, the involuntary muscles are involved in the movement of the cardiac muscle uh our heart it beats continuously there is continuous relaxation and contraction uh, and that relaxation that lub dub things if you keep your ears near someone's chest you can hear that lub dub noise so that is that 70 times per minute our heart relaxes and contracts next is the skeletal muscles so the two ends of the muscles which are attached to the different bones in our body these are called as the skeletal muscles they are the voluntary muscles for example your legs your hands this gives shape to your body next we have the smooth muscles now these are also the involuntary muscles uh, the muscles of your stomach intestine blood vessels except heart all the other vital organ muscles are made up of the smooth muscles and these are usually the internal uh, organ muscles so these muscles are again involuntary and they are called as the smooth muscles you can even compare the different muscles like skeletal smooth and cardiac the structure you can see uh, the all three are different cardiac muscles are little branched in structure smooth muscles look very different from all the two types of muscles skeletal muscles are cylindrical in structure so even by looking at these muscles we can 
are differentiated between these muscles. Now there are few other muscles in our body uh, which work in groups. So when some muscles they contract, uh, the other muscles of the same group they are going to relax. And this is how the proper functioning of our body take place. So if you see a human body, uh, there are the muscles uh, on the upper arm which are called as the biceps. You have the muscles at your back that is called as the triceps. We have the abdominal muscles, we have quadriceps, we have flexors, chest muscles, deltoids. So the people, those who are into bodybuildings, they work on these different types of muscle and they try to tone their muscles so that they can maintain a proper physique in their body. So next we have our digestive system. First of all, what is digestion? So it is conversion of food into soluble form and its absorption into the blood is called as digestion. Now the digestion involves different organs in our body. Uh, it happens in two parts. That is first is the alimentary canal and then we have different types of digestive glands. Uh, so the first starting part from where the digestion starts is from our mouth. Our teeth helps to chew the food and then uh, the digestion process can start. So the process of digestion begins with our teeth. So it is important to learn about the teeth as well. So there are four main types of teeth in uh, humans. First is uh, incisors. Then we have the canines. We have premolars and we have the molars. Now each one have their own specific function. Now in detail of each of the function of the teeth you don't have. But if you have to talk about the basic, the front, the incisors, it is used to cut something. The canines which are at the uh, behind the incisors or which are attached to the incisors. Then we have the premolars and molars which are used to chew the food properly. So the tooth, uh, if you talk about it has to be protected. So it is protected by an enamel which is called as the enamel of the tooth and it is made up of calcium salt. It protects our tooth from any other harm or any other injury. Then we have the saliva in our mouth uh, which consists of enzyme which is called as spitalin or we can also call it as salivary amylase. Now the pitalin consists of the starch which is a sugar which we also call it as maltose. So this saliva it mixes with our food. It uh, then is swallowed inside and it helps this enzyme will help in the digestion of the food. If you gulf your food without chewing it, if the saliva is not mixing with your food properly, then the digestion issues can start. So our digestive system, uh, it consists of mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. Now each one has its own function. We have seen about the mouth. The mouth consists of the teeth from where the digestion process starts. After the mouth, we have salivary glands. The saliva mixes with the food and it helps the food to become uh, more digestible. Enzymes mixes with the food. Then our food passes through the pharynx that is above the esophagus. Uh, it is the open, it is a, a small opening part uh, to the esophagus and trachea. Next we have the esophagus. So it is a tube which is leading from the pharynx. Uh, it directly leads into your stomach and it pushes the food towards your stomach. So that is the main purpose of the esophagus. After esophagus, we have our uh, livers and pancreas. So the liver is the largest gland you can say which will be secreting the digestive juices. Now liver and the pancreas, they do not involve themselves in the digestion process, nothing goes inside them. Everything comes out of them. That is the enzymes or the juices, they are extracted from it so that the food can be digested. So it is the largest gland. It is uh, rich in the supply of blood. Uh, the main function of the liver is to store the glucose. The gallbladder is situated below the uh, liver and it stores a digestive juice which is called as the bile. 
so the bile is carried into the small intestine it mixes with the food and it helps in the digestion of fats and bile also consists of bile salts then we have our pancreas the pancreas will secrete the pancreatic juices which contains different enzymes so your food from your mouth from your esophagus it goes into your stomach and then all the juices of the stomach will mix together so uh, the largest sac we have in the alimentary canal is our stomach uh, all the gastric juices it uh, combines with the food there our food is churned it is converted into a slurry now in our stomach there are three components that is we have hydrochloric acid we have pepsin and we have mucus they are all mixed with the food and our food becomes acidic so uh, proteins are usually digested in the stomach and due to the churning actions the slurry is then pushed on into the small intestine then in the small intestine the liver and the pancreas will secrete the juices uh, the digestive juices and then again there the digestion process will happen so the small intestine is 6 meter long uh, most of the digestion and absorption happens in the small intestine only uh, the juices mixes with the food in the small intestine the absorption into the blood uh, nutrients takes place from the small intestine only and then the remaining substances are then passed on to the large intestine now large intestine is smaller than the small intestine it is around 1.5 meter long so only water is absorbed into the large intestine uh, below that we have a small part which is called as the appendix it is attached to the large intestine Uh, the undigested the appendix is a west uh, vestigial organ it is it has having no function in our body so the undigested remains of the food from the small intestine it goes into the large intestine and it is then thrown out from the rectum and anus out of our body so this is the entire digestive system from mouth to salivary gland to esophagus to stomach where again there will be juices the slurry is formed then it goes into the small intestine where liver and pancreas will secrete their juices from the small intestine the waste goes into the large intestine and then out of the body so here you can see how uh, the different glands are situated the salivary glands you can see it is situated near your mouth region even when you talk some amount of saliva is secreted out so the saliva mixes with your food then the food is then passed on to the stomach now our digestive system uh, is very strong but it cannot digest anything that we consume so many people are putting their life at risk by chewing tobaccos or smoking or by drinking alcohol so if we put these type of substances into our body our digestive system is not going to work properly the stomach acids are reduced uh, the digestion process does not happen there is a dysfunction in our body uh, many other things also happen like vomiting nausea the teeth or the gums they start to decay because of the unwanted substances entering into our body and then slowly slowly such type of things can also lead to cancer and at the end can cause death so our role should be to stop this type of addiction in people if you know people around you who are addicted to smoking or drinking alcohol you should explain them this this, this is very very wrong and they should avoid such type of things uh, tobacco free awareness programs are being done by the government where they teach people that harmful effects of the tobacco so all these things should be avoided in our neighborhood should be explained to the people so that the tobacco consumption smoking alcohol consumption all of these things can be reduced from our society